one fretbare, Christianity has ceased to be a source of scandal and surprise, to precipitate crisis, or to fertilize intelligences. It no longer inconveniences the mind, nor enforces the least interrogation. The anxieties it provokes, like its answers and its solutions, are flabby, soporific, no fruitful self-torment, no drama can start here. It has served its term. Already we yawn over the cross. To attempt to save Christianity, to prolong its career, would not occur to us. On occasion it awakens our indifference. After having occupied our depths, it barely manages to sustain itself on our surface. Soon supplanted, it will be added to the total of our unsuccessful experiments. Consider the cathedrals, having lost the impulse that supported their mass, turned back into stone. They shrink and slip. Their very steeples, which once pointed insolently to heaven, suffer the contamination of weight and imitate the modesty of our lassitudes. When we happen to make our way inside one of them, we think of the futility of the prayers offered, of so many feathers and follies wasted. Soon the void will reign here. Nothing gothic is left in the substance. Nothing gothic left in ourselves. If Christianity preserves a semblance of reputation, it is due to the backward who, pursuing it with a retrospective hatred, would pulverize the two thousand years in which, by some will, it has obtained the acquiescence of men's minds. Since these retarded creatures, these haters, are becoming increasingly rare, and since Christianity finds no comfort for the loss of so lasting popularity, it seeks on all sides an event likely to restore it to the foreground, to actuality, to become curious once again. Christianity would have to be raised to the dignity of an accursed sect. Only the Jews could take it over. They would project enough strangeness into it to renew it, to rejuvenate its mystery. Had they adopted it at the right moment, they would have suffered the fate of so many other peoples whose name history barely preserves. It was to spare themselves such a fate that they rejected it, leaving to the Gentiles the ephemeral advantages of salvation. They opted for the lasting disadvantages of perdition. Infidelity, that is the censure which, after St. Paul, continues to pursue them. A ridiculous criticism, since their fault consists precisely of an excessive loyal loyalty to themselves. Beside them, the first Christians looked like opportunists, sure of their cause. They cheerfully av awaited mar martyrdom. By exposing themselves to it, they did no more than sacrifice to the moors of the period when the taste for spectacular bloodlettings made this a sublime and easy matter.